Hi there, Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my practice on longevity and bone health. Have you been told that reversing osteoporosis is impossible? Well, today I'm gonna to show you three cases where we have stopped osteoporosis in its tract and put people on the path to rebuilding bone. So our first case today is a patient who was in her mid to late 50s who had recently gone through menopause and was diagnosed with osteoporosis. Now she came to us because she was very concerned because not only was she diagnosed with osteoporosis, but the change from one DEXA scan to the next was around 12% in her spine, 10% in one hip, and almost 7% in the other. So this is what I would consider a free fall with rapid loss of bone. So fortunately, this patient had also been given some good advice to get some additional imaging. So she got what's called a REMS study, R-E-M-S, from a company called Echolite. And this is an ultrasound study that not only shows you your bone density, but also shows you your bone quality. So we were able to review this study with her and we were able to show her that actually, while you may have had some rapid bone loss, your bone quality is not as bad as you might think. So this gave her some early relief and some reduced anxiety to really help her get through this early concerning part and on to the next stage of her development, which is going to be creating a program to help rebuild her bone after we stop her bone loss. So we put this patient on a program and worked with our coaches to help to optimize her nutrition created a targeted supplement plan based off of her testing, which included genetics, included functional testing, included blood work. Uh, we also helped her to optimize her hormones, and in this case included replacement for not only improving her bones, but also other signs and symptoms of menopause. And then we followed her along over the course of a year, and then she got a repeat DEXA scan. So what we found on repeat DEXA is that we were able to completely stop her bone loss. That free fall of bone that was occurring, we were able to completely put a stop to it. And now she is gonna be on her way to building bone and truly reversing her osteoporosis. Now this next patient is gonna be a little bit more subtle, but what I like about this case is that it shows that we don't just need to look at DEXA, we need to look at the intermediate lab tests too. So two lab tests that I talk about quite a bit that I really like, one is called propeptide type one collagen, or we'll call it P1NP, and the other one is called C telopeptide, and we'll call that one CTX. So CTX is a blood marker for bone turnover, specifically of bone breakdown, meaning that as the osteoclast, the cells that break down bone are doing their thing, this number is going to rise. P1 and P is a marker of bone building. So as the osteoblasts, the cells that make bone are doing their thing, then P1 and P is going to rise. Now we always want a balance of bone breakdown and bone build up because we always want the bones to be turning over. That's one of the challenges with the pharmaceuticals or drugs in this space is that they sometimes will completely block one or the other, sometimes both. And so you get sort of stagnant bone turnover and that's what leads to these atypical fractures that you hear with the drugs. Okay, so the CTX, the marker for bone breakdown when this patient started was over 640, 641 to be exact. Now that's higher than we like to see it because when you compare that to the bone building marker P1 and P, that was at 66. Now these are never gonna be the same because they're on different scales, but 66 for P1 and P is relative, it's kind of moderate low and then, and then the 641 is, is quite high. So we need to bring that CTX down and we need to bump the P1 and P up. So we put this patient on a protocol really around gut health, optimizing nutrition. She had some challenges around some food intolerances and some previous gut stuff. So we did a lot of coaching around diet, around nutrition, and then she was changing her exercise habits, really working on stress, which is a big deal for her. Um, we were able to do a lot of lifestyle stuff and we were able to make some significant changes. So her CTX at the six month mark went from 641 to 406. Now that is a pretty significant drop just with lifestyle change. Her P1 and P went from 66 to 94. So that is a almost 50% increase in P1 and P, which is a great sign that we're really working to build bone. So this is a really nice example of some early changes in the process of reversing osteoporosis. And her, while her DEXA is pending, I think we're gonna see some improvements over time. So really happy with her progress. 
Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe, like, and share with anyone that you think might really benefit from this information. If you'd like to learn more about how we manage osteoporosis, sign up for our masterclass with the link in the description below. During this masterclass, we're gonna go over how we manage bone health, and we're gonna give you a lot of tips and tricks of things you can do yourself at home. So our third case is a, a great case of a patient who was treated as a lot of patients are. In 2015, she was diagnosed with, with pretty significant osteopenia, not quite osteoporosis. She was put on medications by her primary team, specifically bisphosphonates, and she didn't have another DEXA scan until 2020. So in 2015, again, she had pretty significant osteopenia, not quite osteoporosis with T-scores just under negative two. In 2020, she had a repeat DEXA scan done and it showed that her hips were continuing to get worse and that her osteoporosis was continuing to worsen. So she started working with us and again, we put her on a program that was very specific to her own dietary needs. We really optimized her nutrition, optimized her protein consumption, worked on her gut absorption, put her on a targeted supplementation plan, and she also was a candidate for hormone replacement. On repeat DEXA scan, we saw an increase of her T-score in her spine by almost 14% and almost 7% in both of her hips. So this is a great example of a patient who was previously being treated with pharmaceuticals and continuing to see bone loss. When we put her on the Optimal Bone Health program, we were able to identify some causes of bone loss, reverse those causes, and immediately we start seeing improvements in bone health. It's just a ghost to show that the pharmaceutical approach, while there is a role, it is not the only thing. And this is a patient who really had some fundamental things that needed to be fixed prior to the medications being able to do what they're supposed to do. Hopefully in this case, she won't need to go back on medications and will continue to see improvements in her bone health. Thanks so much for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe, like, and sign up for notifications so you can learn when we have new content posted to this channel. If you know anybody that would benefit from this information, please share this with them. The more people that this is shared with, the more people we can educate on the topics of bone health and osteoporosis. If you want to learn more about how we manage osteoporosis, please look for the link in the description below for our masterclass. In our masterclass, you'll learn about some tips and tricks of things you can do at home, as well as how we manage osteoporosis in our optimal bone health practice. And lastly, we want to hear from you. If you ask us questions on the YouTube channel, we'll answer them as quickly as we can. If there are topics that you want to hear about, please let us know and we will put together content on the topics that are most frequently requested because our goal is really to educate as many people as possible through this and our other social media platforms.